So over the last couple of weeks, we've been asking the question, where do you want to go to church? Well, perhaps what we're asking is more than just something to do with our, our preference. And maybe there's a bigger question to ask, and that is, what is church? In John chapter 20, we find the disciples firstly behind locked doors in fear, what I called locked doors fellowship. And then we see that Jesus turns up and everything instantly changes. They go from complete fear to being overjoyed because Jesus, by his very presence, brings peace. So today, let's continue the passage, reading from verse 28. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. So Jesus says again, he says a second time, peace be with you. It's important for us to note that we don't want to lose the peace. And then he goes on to say, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Here we have our third church. It's what I've simply called a sent church. This is the church on a mission. Whatever you want to call it, it's a church that understands we can't just spend time admiring Jesus. When Jesus comes, he brings peace, but he comes with a bigger purpose. And he says, as the Father sent me, I'm sending you. So often, I think we can easily misunderstand what the presence of God is about. We can so often forget that there is a purpose to Jesus coming and revealing himself to us. He brings us peace. Yes, thankfully he does. But also, there is an instruction for his disciples. So let me quickly share with you today some of the aspects of people who belong to a going church. Firstly, Jesus says it on numerous occasions, so it must be important. In Matthew 28, he says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore go. In Mark 16, he says, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. In Acts 1, verse 8, we read, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You see, it's all about going. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. All Christians are meant to have go in their hearts. We are meant to be a people who are willing to go. Doesn't matter where it is, or if some of us stay at home, but go is meant to be in our hearts. Secondly, as we go, we are to be a discipling people. Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Discipling is part of what we are supposed to do as we go. We are called to make disciples. Oswald Chambers once said this, and I love this little quote. Our work is not to save souls, but to disciple them. Salvation and sanctification are the work of God's sovereign grace. And our work as his disciples is to disciple others' lives until they are totally yielded to God. One life totally devoted to God is of more value to him than 100 lives which have simply been awakened by his spirit. As workers for God, we must reproduce our own kind spiritually. And those lives will be God's testimony to us as his workers. God brings us up to a standard by his grace and we are responsible for reproducing that same standard in others. Our job is to make disciples, all of us. Do you know, even if you've only been a Christian for three days, start passing on something of the things you have learned to others. I wonder, let me ask you a question. Is there someone that you know that could benefit from a little of your time? If so, why not give a little of yourself to them? It's part of what it means to be a going church. Thirdly, we are to be an international people. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. So not just cut off locked doors fellowship behind closed doors because we're afraid. Not even living peace church, simply enjoying the wonderful presence of Jesus. God wants us to make an impact to the ends of the earth. Revelation 5 verse 9 says, And they sang a new song, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased men for God 
from every tribe and language and people and nation. God wants us to have a heart for all nations and it's easier than ever to get there. I wonder if you've ever heard of the company EasyJet the budget airline company, and they don't serve you any tea or coffee. They don't give you any food. They keep everything to a bare minimum. And don't worry, I'm not going to just suggest that you go and buy a cheap flight and travel somewhere. But I'd like this morning to introduce you to Easiest Jet. It's even better. Easiest Jet has total flexible timetable. You can board Easiest Jet any time of the day or night, but you board on your knees. There's no tea or coffee served in flight, but an easiest jet you can take off and go to nation after nation in prayer. Bringing the people there before God, praying for their needs, praying for their situation. God says, do we have a heart for the nations? If so, pray. Isaiah 56 verse 7 says, my house will be a house of prayer for all nations. You know, God is looking for us to be praying around praying around the nations. Get it in your heart. Early in the morning is a wonderful time. Flights are pretty empty then. You could get on easily and if you cheat you can even take your own cup of coffee or tea. We are to go to all the nations and we can do this by boarding Easiest Jet in prayer. Fourthly, we are to be a people of faith. Jesus comes in And he meets with the disciples. And I think, you know, if I had been Jesus, I probably would have said something like, hey guys, what happened to you? Where were you on Thursday night and Friday morning? Where were you all when I needed you? I think there's a few things, guys, we need to talk about here. Especially you, Peter. You even said you didn't know me. But that's not what Jesus said. He just said, as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. What, us? But we let you down. We got so many things wrong. We don't understand half of what it's all about, Jesus. No, as the Father has sent me, Jesus looks at them and he says, I'm sending you. Jesus puts his faith in his disciples. He speaks faith in them. He says, I trust you to go and I'll be with you. As the Father has been with me, I will be with you. Don't worry. John 14, 12 tells us, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son of Man may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Here is a promise for all God's sent people that we will do greater things than anything we have seen before, greater things than Jesus, that we can ask of him anything and it will be done. Now, we're not there yet, but you know, we're getting there. Isn't it good to be a part of a going church? Lastly, Jesus says, receive the Holy Spirit. You see, we are people who are to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. To have the Holy Spirit working through us. Jesus said, my going away is good for you because when I go, you will have someone better. In essence, for us to be the people of God and the people that God has called us to be. Catherine Coleman tells this wonderful story. The Father, Son and Holy Spirit were sitting in heaven one day. When the Father began to outline his plans to his son, Jesus... What I'd like you to do is to go to earth and be born as a tiny vulnerable baby to an unmarried couple. You'll grow up just like a lad, like all the others, but you know you'll be different because you'll always obey your parents and you'll never sin. And when you've grown to be a man, you'll start teaching and preaching, healing the sick and raising the dead. Many of the religious leaders will hate you because of your success and the way that people flock to you. The plan to kill you in the most horrible way possible. You'll be sentenced, unjustly flogged and spat upon. You'll be hung on a cross and you'll be left there to die. And as you die, you'll carry in your body all the sin of the world. 
taking my punishment for every one of them. Looking directly at Jesus, the father asked, well, son, how do you feel about this plan? Jesus paused, thought for a while. Then he looked up at his father and then across to the Holy Spirit and he said, OK, Dad, I'll go if he comes with me. As the father has sent me, I'm sending you. The Holy Spirit is always there with Jesus. The Holy Spirit is always there with us. Where do you go to church? What sort of church do you want to be? With all the challenges that we face in this country, all the challenges that we currently face in the world, you know, I believe Jesus would once again say, peace be with you. But he would also want to say, go. And we can do that right where we are. As we pray for the nations, as we meet our friends, as we serve our community, realising once again the mission that Jesus has called us to, the mission that started in that locked doors fellowship all those years ago. A mission that always includes the command to go.